the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Once again, as we gather this morning, we take a moment to call to mind our sin. We ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we, who call on you in our need, may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left and seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazal as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Meloah, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Be Our response is, I long to see your face, O Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks. You my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. And I, will see your face. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. And I will Shine like lights on the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. 
it is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. So I, when I'm talking to some of my um, Protestant friends who take the scriptures literally, and everything that's written in there is exactly the way it is, I always send them to this passage and ask them, you know, have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? Oh, yeah, I guess. I said, then why do you still have both your hands? You should have had them cut off a long time ago. And I'm not, I'm not even going to ask you how you look at people. But anyway, the other thing I think, I mean, what Jesus is really getting at, and I think, well, one of the things, there's lots of, tons of messages in all of these passages. But, you know, when you begin to see people as objects for your own pleasure, or you begin to do things for your own well-being as opposed to that of the people around you, it can become a bit of a slippery slope. So everybody, I think there are times this automatic reaction. You see somebody that's attractive and you might think something about them that maybe isn't, you know, totally heartfelt, let's say. But it's one thing to have that automatic reaction. It's another thing when it becomes almost an addiction or that we begin to see people as objects of our own pleasure, of our own desire, as opposed to seeing them as God creates them. And I think that's one of the big issues with the proliferation of all of the stuff on television that, and obviously pornography, that just uses people as objects for the pleasure of another person and doesn't see them as the whole person that they are created to be. And I think while those two things might not be our issue, I think we need to be careful of the things that can lead us into temptation or the old occasions of sin. One of my occasions of sin, as you all know, is behind the steering wheel. Now, I can't avoid that, and I've gotten much, much better at it. Now, the only thing I don't like and this is where I get into the occasion, the, uh, the, into the difficulty, is when someone is riding right on the tail of my car. So instead of saying what I would normally say, I put my turn signal on, I pull off to the side of the road, I let them pass me, I think terrible things about them, and then I get behind them, and I don't get up next to them. So there are times in our lives where we know there are things whether it's drinking or whether it's eating or whether it is seeing people as objects or whatever. Those are the things that we need to watch out for because those are those occasions of sin that we hardly ever think about much anymore. And so Jesus is really challenging us to know that certain things become a slippery slope, that certain things can lead us, if we allow them, down a path that is not healthy for us. All of us sin. All of us make mistakes. All of us do things that are wrong. There are so many times when we don't follow what we know is the right thing to do. The beauty of Catholicism is that we have the opportunity for reconciliation. We have the opportunity to start over again. We have the opportunity that, that God continuously opens his arms to us and says, okay, let's start it again. And I think that that's one of the blessings that we have. So if you're struggling with something, bring it to the sacrament. You know, if you're struggling with something, you're not ready to show what to do, you know, give one of us a call. We'll be glad to sit down with you and talk about whatever it is that you're struggling with. And hopefully all of us together as a community can see each other as God's creation and help each other on the journey. Please stand.
Uniting our minds and hearts as one, let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For all members of the church, may God's fulfillment of the law continue to inspire greater discipleship in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For local leaders, may God's justice guide them in their efforts to practice fairness to all. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who face difficult family divisions, may God's love be with them as they seek healing for their wounds. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may God's call to service continue to bring us closer to one another and to him. Let us pray to the Lord. For men and women in the armed forces, for men and women in blue, first responders, doctors and nurses, all those who care for the sick, and corrections officers, for their safety, let us pray to the Lord. For all the people that are working on our property that are now doing some wonderful construction work, we ask for blessings upon them and their safety as well. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our dearly departed, today we pray especially for Francis Carroll, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. And for peace in our nation, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you have commissioned us as your disciples to bring your word to those we encounter. We ask that you hear and answer our prayers according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be acceptable, an acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, our Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saints Peter and Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation be advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as the passing from this life Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but a lot of the cement trucks are there, so they're going to start pouring the slab. And then I think by next week, or maybe in 10 days, they'll be bringing the steel. So you'll start to see the structure go up. So it'll be pretty exciting. I mean, it's exciting now, but it'll be even more exciting when you start seeing the actual frame going up and so forth. So we keep those guys in. I don't know if there's any women out there working or not, but we keep them all in our prayers for their safety, especially as they start you know, bringing steel in and they start climbing on ladders or whatever they do out there. I don't know. But anyway, let's pray for them. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.